still on the throne. Persevere, my children. I am on the throne. Amen. Keep planting. Keep water. Keep praying. Don't give up. Somebody didn't give up on you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, guys, everybody, um, I'm getting married today. Wow. Everybody's invited. I'd like to see everybody come. It'll be at three here, and then the reception is going to be over at Pastor Matt and Gina's house. I'm so yeah. excited! Yay. Yay. You guys hot? Yes. yes. Open windows. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Here, let me get that one. Hang on. Well worth the price. The little holes it has 25 cents, 50 cents. Go ahead. Vicky and I went on Tuesday and saw the movie it's about the Six Day War. It's the anniversary of the Six Day War. Oh, wow. That's right. And it was only shown, it was shown nationwide or worldwide only on Tuesday. And both of the theaters that uh, showed it here in Reno were both sold out. Wow. Hallelujah. And I think that by judging from the uh, people there, it was all about something that we lived through as young teenagers but had real no <laughs> knowledge of seeing, you know, because it's in the history books and we heard about it. I wish that uh, more really straightforward documentaries would be made about things in our history that wasn't, it wasn't shaded what one side or the other, but it was about the uh, paratroopers and what they did and what they accomplished and the decisions that were made. <coughs> and I want to leave it with this, because I think this was one of the uh, verses that was referred to. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, Amen. and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment <coughs> shall be condemned. Yes. This wow. is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, Amen. and her righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> He's showing his age, right? Early yeah. teens. Yeah, some of you people were born. I was wondering where he was coming from with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the cradle? cradle. In our hands. Praise the Lord. Yeah. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No judgment, no tongue that rises up against you in judgment. He will condemn it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to preach? I was checking on my husband. Oh, I would too. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're late now. You're late. You're late. Come back in, I'm worried. Now there's there's a wife for you. Her husband goes outside, she goes, uh oh, he's gone 30 seconds too long. Let's go check on him. Right? Hey. So? Better leave it there. Yeah, I better leave it there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so Lord we thank you today that you would show up in our midst I thank you for this company here Lord I thank you for this family I thank you God we need to spread this around and so Lord we, we honor you today in your word we honor you with our voices we've lifted you up in praise I thank you for coming sitting on the praises of your people and we thank you God we thank you God we break off the pharisaical spirits off our lives to try to earn something from you. Forgive us, God, for not mixing what we hear with faith all the time. And so we open ourselves up today, Lord, to receive what you have for us by faith. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I was doing a study in the Beatitudes this week. Interesting. Matthew 5 through Matthew 7. 
And it's an interesting study, so I'm just going to zip through it all because, um, and it's not going to be exactly expositorily, but it'll be kind of like that. If you don't understand that, never mind about it. <laughs> Expository is they take, take scriptures and they start at Genesis and go through to the Revelation. You ever hear Chuck Smith, Calvary Chapel? Yep. That's what he does. He starts at the beginning and goes to the end. And he preaches every week like that. What an awesome thing. He knows what he's going to do like a year in advance. Whoa. I get like four hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes I get more. Sometimes it comes on Monday, you know. But one thing God has dealt with me he says, "What you hear in secret places, proclaim it from the rooftops." Amen. So I want you to know something about me. Everything I get, I give to you. So I'm no farther along than anybody else. I kind of jump ahead once in a while. Probably not. You're probably way out there, somewhere out, but. I, will, I just love the scriptures. It says in Matthew, the seventh chapter, because I'm going to start at the end and go back to the beginning. It says in Matthew, the 724, it says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. I want you to know two things here. The rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on both houses. In this world you will have tribulation. Okay? Everybody has tribulation. It is how we we face up to that tribulation what happens in our lives Amen. whether we fall or stand because it doesn't say it was founded on a rock it's founded on the rock our rock is Jesus Christ there's no other foundation that can be laid except which is laid and that is Jesus Christ Amen. so our foundation the place we stand the place we grow from the place we go from is the foundation of Jesus Christ without Jesus Christ we have no foundation I have realized this last week again that people in the world are truly lost. People that don't have any understanding of the scriptures are truly, I don't know how they do it. I have no concept of how they uh, function in this earth. With no hope, with no hope after life, with, with fear of death all the time, with fear of somebody leaving them, or fear of this guy going somewhere, or he leaving. I, I couldn't live like that. I'd go belly, I would be drinking and doing drugs. Something. I would. Because I can't man I have got to have some altered state of consciousness. Because this this state of consciousness that I live in every day, and as I look at the world around me, is not enough. It is not enough. I, I would have to drink. And stay drunk pretty much. Yeah. Or at least yeah. once a night. <laughs> oh, not enough. enough. Not enough. <laughs> it was for me. I had really bad hangovers. So <clears throat> Okay. So, what is? <laughs> All right, you guys. Testimonies later. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got a bunch of X's in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so glad. Yes. I'm gonna Amen. X a lot of things. X this, next Free. that. Free. Praise Free. the Lord. Free. <laughs> Free. <laughs> you, Amen. You, Amen. you know this world. Yeah. yeah. Come on. This. This world will try to get you to do That's those things. Right. It says in Amos 2, 11 and 12, it says, You gave Nazarites wine to drink, and you said to the prophets, Don't prophesy. The world has given the pure in heart wine to drink and drugs to do because they're looking for something to get them young and take those, take those young minds and those young hearts and corrupt them right away. In other words, they would be in Nazarites. Now, you can get cleansed by the blood and get pure and come back, yes. yes. But the world is trying to make That's good people bad. Yep. Yep. I've realized that. Come I on. used to do it. Come on, Come on let's go yeah. have a drink, man. Right, yep. Come on, let's go party. Come on, let's go do something. And peer pressure. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Kids pressing people into it. Yeah. And it, it says in Isaiah 59, 15, And he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. In other words, you make... They're hunting you. 
If you want to depart from evil, they're hunting you. Yeah. They want to take you and make you like them. Yeah. Actually, I want to take you and make you something like me or like my master. Amen. Because he's full of peace and joy right. and happiness and contentment yes. and love yes. and power and those kind of things. Amen. Amen. Yes. But the other side of that, the enemy hates you and wants you down. Mm. He wants you down. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, in Isaiah, I want to go there just for a second. You guys are really relating with this. Too. Way too much, by the way. I'm going to get some amens today. Yeah, no, 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 no. All right. In Isaiah 5, 20 through 23, it says this. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to men mighty at drinking wine. Woe to men valiant at mixing intoxicating drink who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away justice from the righteous man. Ooh, man. Go over here to the 32nd chapter of the same book. Isaiah, if you didn't get it the first time. Isaiah 32, 7 and 8 says... Also, the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speak justice. But well, watch this. But a generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. Now jump over there to 16 through uh, 18. It says, Then justice shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. The work of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, in quiet resting places. That's a difference between in the world and in Christ. In the world and in Christ. Going by the world system or going by the Word of God and the will of God. There's two different ways here. It says, it, praise the Lord. The work of righteousness shall be peace. The effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. The world is looking for quietness and assurance. They will go to <coughs> such extremes. I want you to know that some people walk along the road with things in their ears. <coughs> or the music up so loud that a guy a half mile away can hear. They're looking for quietness. That's right. That's good, Lord. Yes. That was really good. <laughs> They're looking for quietness because that's the only way they can get it. Yeah. Block out the world. Yeah. Let me hear my own stuff. I don't want to hear from anybody else. Right. And that's where quietness comes. Me, I go down the river and listen to that. Yeah. Okay. Now, in the, um, okay. So in Galatians 3, we'll go around here. Galatians, the third chapter, says this. And this is, this is interesting. I wasn't even going to read this, but I'm going to. It says, Therefore. <laughs> Well, let's start up at 3.1. It says, O oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, that you should not, not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly pro, pro, portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Look, look at this fifth verse. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or hearing by faith? You notice the supply of the Spirit and miracles were uh, such a matter of fact. At that point in time, he didn't even elaborate on it. In other words, the Spirit is supplied abundantly and miracles happen all the time. Yes. He was just asking, does it happen by the works of the law or does it happen by the hearing of faith? Or Roberts used to say, there's a miracle passing by you every day. Amen. All you have to do is reach out and grab that thing. Does everybody him on TV? I love that guy. Put your hands on me. <laughs> In uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Oh, I like this too. I'm going to jump around the Bible just a bit. Remember, we're, um, we are studying in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 through 7. I thought you remember that. Okay. In 13.11, it says... When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now what makes you different from other people who are trapped in sin? What makes you different? One thing we learned the last three weeks is the way you think. 
and the way you process information makes you different from anybody else in the world. You look around and see how people are processing the information. Even you, if you got your eyes on somebody or some circumstance or something like that, you're processing your information wrong. You need to process information by the, by the spirit of love, the spirit of liberty, understanding of the scriptures, and how this makes reasonable things happen. I mean, is it, is it destroying you? Is it making you better off? Is it causing peace to come into your heart? The way you're responding to people, is it better for you? Is it better for somebody else? Okay, let's go on. Um, Romans 5.5 5 says, He has poured out His love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Okay? The way you approach life and death are different than the world's approach. Everybody, you look at commercial. Take this pill. It'll make you last longer. Take this pill. It'll make you horny even if you're old. Take this pill. Yeah, whatever. You know, we're all trying to stay young. We're trying to stay in this position of, oh, I'm 25 and I'm groovy. I get all wrinkled up your neck. Your, your grandkids are going, oh, Grandpa, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> they do. Okay. So the way we approach death and life in Philippians, the first chapter, the 21st verse, it says, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Tell that to somebody in the world that if you die, it's a good thing. What's the matter with you? Oh my God, you got to hang on to life. Right. Oh, Lord. Okay, go to 2 Timothy with me. This is really fun too. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. We're going to read about a little bit of what life is in the world, okay? In 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, it says, But know this, that in the last days, who all knows we're in the last days? Yes. Amen. In the last days, perilous times will come. Fierce, dangerous, painful, grievous, hard to deal with. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Isn't that something? Here you got all the sinners and even the religious people. They have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. And you'll go back. If you just have a form of godliness, you'll go back into the world. You'll start functioning according to that spirit. Oh. Yeah, okay, that's the world system. So in 2 Thessalonians, a couple pages back, I always get those backwards. I thought Timothy ought to be first. I'll have to talk to the, to the writer. <laughs> yeah, you know how that goes? Yeah. First Timothy, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, in the second verse it says, um, let's do 1 and 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. And I was looking at this. Why do people function the way they do? They got no faith. They don't have no understanding of faith and how it works. They'll say, well, I'm of this faith. And what they're saying is I'm religious in this mode. Right. Okay? They're not saying they have faith. They're saying, it's my faith. Well, I, I, my kids got a book, World Religions, or the, uh, the, the History of Faith of the World. They have no faith. I looked at them. I looked at them. I looked at most of the religions in the world as worldviews. I looked at them one time, and I found out that only Christianity works. No other worldview works. It really doesn't. I, I dare you to check. I wouldn't check it out if I was you. I went through a terminal. <laughs> that whole thing is such a drag. It's such yeah. a ter terrible study. But it, Christianity is the only one that works and has ever worked. In the history of the world, Christianity is the only one that ever worked. Okay. <coughs> check it out. Check it out. It says, unreasonable and wicked men not all have faith. So some people are very unreasonable and they're very wicked. Amen. And you run into wicked people. You run into unreasonable people. You... I sat here and talked to two people for two hours one day and counseling and bring them reason into their life and things like Christians. And when I got to the end, the guy went right back to what he said in the first place. But she, da-da-da-da-da, I'm thinking. 
Get out of here! <laughs> Why did you come over here? You got your mind made up. Go do what you're gonna do. You know, go, go, go get on that path and see where it leads you. That's what, you know. And seriously, you gotta get to the bottom sometimes before you ever look up and say, ah. There are times, you know, there are times. So, um, in Romans 5.3 it says, We glory in tribulation. It's a little different than the world, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, see how God's gonna fix it. <laughs> yeah, either that, or we can suck our thumb and twirl our hair and tell everybody how bad it is, and oh my God, this is happening. Oh, what am I gonna do? Oh, and, uh, I think I'll just shoot myself. Snap the heck out of it. If you got somebody up on a pedestal like that, you better get them off of there because you're an idolater at that point in time. They are your God, mm -hmm. and if they fall, you fall. What kind of control does that person have over your life? Yeah. Don't let a person like that have control over your life. The only one that has control over your life is God Almighty. That's right. And your choice to serve Him. That's right. Hallelujah. Oh, Otherwise, somebody Amen. else rules your life. Right. We glory in tribulation. <laughs> and, and it says in 5.5, 5, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. So in Ma at Mark 16, this is really fun too. This is such a fun Bible study. I just had a great time. <laughs> This thing in Matthew is just a blast. <laughs> Mark 16. Okay. 16.14 it says. 16.14. Took a little bit. Oh, okay. In 14 it says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. When was the last time you talked to somebody over and over and over and they just didn't get it? And they just hardened their heart. I think hardening of the heart, some, sometimes you get so enamored that it's hard to look away. But you can harden your hearts on purpose. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to hurt me again. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're living in the world, man. You get, get, out, get over it. So do something because you're going to get hurt again in the world. Who all here hasn't been hurt in a church? <laughs> Huh? Everybody. Yeah, of course. You just got in like a year ago. You're around us. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Anybody hurts in this place? We beat that crap out of me. No, it's all right. Mark 16, 14. <laughs> okay. After he'd risen. 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Now these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Now let's think about taking up serpents. Remember when Paul got bit by a serpent? Yeah. And he shook it off in the fire? Mm -hmm. That does not mean we let rattlesnakes in here and go pick them up and prove our faith. Okay? You can read story after story about missionaries who have ate uh, rancid food, even ate poison before, and it did not harm them. That's what the Bible is talking about. We don't bring poison in here, but you drink it and see how much faith we have. Okay, let's not get out of balance here. Okay, because there are churches like that. There are churches like that. Prove my faith. Take this rattlesnake. You got, you got a rattlesnake this big around, you go, oh, okay. <laughs> Me and it be spiders crawling up my arm. <coughs> can't do it, can't do it. Okay. <laughs> then look, look what it says after this. So then after the Lord has spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus was received into heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. Never to die, eternal in the heavens, at the right hand of God. Okay, and they went out and preached everywhere. Woo! The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. Amen. And we're seeing that. Absolutely. We're seeing it. Absolutely. You people in this Woo! place have seen more miracles than a lot of people have. That's right. We have prayed for people, hey, no more cancer, prayed for people, broken feet, get fixed in one day. Amen. Other things, all, over and over. God is confirming His word. And as long as we're brave enough, to step out in faith and actually pray for somebody in the name of Jesus Christ, to speak His name over them, something happens. So God confirms that word. I wrote down here, what about us? Yeah, okay, okay God. 
<laughs> so Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. We believe we will live forever. That makes you different for real. You believe you're going to live forever. I had a lady ask me at the smoke shop once. She said, I said, well, I'm feeling good. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm going to live forever. I ain't never going to die. I'm going to pass through the valley of the shadow of death. And she says, don't tempt fate. <laughs> I said, fate got nothing to do with this. Jesus Christ has died for my sin. He's risen again and invited me to come home with him when I die. Amen. Ooh. <laughs> Can I get that? Oh, of course. She didn't say that, but I wish she would have. I was ready. You got, you got to stay ready. Okay. So what else don't we do? So go back to Matthew finally. What what else are we are we different? This is interesting. <clears throat> okay. That's right. You guys are good at this. Okay. Okay. It says in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. It says, we don't worry about stuff. <coughs> we don't worry about stuff. Right. People of God, we don't worry about stuff. Why? Okay, I wrote down here why. Okay, it says right here, worry is distraction, occupation causing stress, <coughs> preoccupation causing stress, and anxiety. Where are you at, Matt? Where? Matthew 6, yeah. 25 through 33. Okay. It says, we don't worry about the stuff. Yeah. That was a quickie paraphrase. Okay, we'll come back to this, don't worry. Because it's back over here somewhere in my notes, I believe. Yeah, it's right here, so don't worry, we'll get back. <laughs> but that's just kind of making a point. What don't the children of God do that the world does? Other people in the world uh, get a lot of money, and then they don't worry. Isn't that right? No. No. no, it's no. not right. I know guys that have a really lot of money. They're worried all the time. They're worried about losing their money. They're worried about losing their money. They're worried about, even if they have a lot of money, they worry about having more. Whatever. Worry is not tied to how much money you have. Worry is tied to what you think on the inside. Okay, so we don't worry because that causes distraction, preoccupation. It causes stress. In Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing. But with all prayer and supplication, yet your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. So, be anxious for nothing. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, it is ridiculous. People in the world, they go to the doctor. I'm feeling a little stressed. Here, take a little Valium. A little uh, Ativan. You know, I got some of the Madavan pills. <laughs> they are the coolest thing. Hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Better not be taking that stuff. Fuck it up, fuck it up. <laughs> so be anxious for nothing. And then I wrote down here in 4.8, it's the most exciting thing in Philippians 4.8. It says, um, whatever, uh, whatever is good, whatever is right, whatever is a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything praiseworthy, think on these things. And I wrote down here, what are you thinking about? Or, you ever hear of somebody ask you, what were you thinking? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What were you thinking? And you think, well, I wasn't thinking about Jesus on that one. Okay. Okay. So, this is good. Go to Job with me just for a second. Isn't this great? We're in Matthew there. <laughs> You like it. You know you do. Okay, Job, 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 Job 42. This is good. After, after Job has gone through all his stuff, he says this. In the fifth verse of the 42nd chapter, he says, now he's talking to the Lord. He says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes sees you. Therefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Now, I want you to know that all through the scriptures, it says, know the Lord. It doesn't say know about Him. Okay? I've heard about you with the hearing of the ear. In other words, somebody else has told me about you. I believed in you. I got this thing. Okay. But the Lord says in Matthew 7, see how we're right there in the Beatitudes, 
In Matthew 7, 21 to 23, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to, declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from you, you who practice lawlessness. Uh oh I never knew you. So our focus is not on signs and wonders. You understand? We're That's to right. function in signs and wonders, but that is not our focus. Right. But on the one to whom we believe in, yes. so that yeah. signs and wonders Amen. will happen. That's right. Amen. Because if we focus on signs and wonders, they might happen, but you won't know the Lord. That's right. Not Good necessarily. Word. You might. <coughs> okay. Um, in Second Peter one three, we always read that uh, through the knowledge of Him, through the knowledge of Him, we have access to the uh, uh, divine nature through the knowledge of God. So when we know Him, we partake of His divine nature. In Ephesians 3.19 it says, To know the love of Christ that passes knowledge. <clears throat> In other words, you can't get it here. It has to happen. How do you get to know somebody? Spend time. Spend time. That's right. You don't read about them in a book. That's right. You know, I could read all about Regina. People told me about her with the hurrying of the air, but then I met her. <clears throat> you know? Then I got to know her, and then I was really in love with her because here, I had made it, people. I was 40 years old, over the hump, didn't have to get married, was going to serve the Lord my whole heart. It never would have worked. But then I met Regina. What do you do with a girl like her? You marry her. Yeah, she got two boys. It's just ah, wild people. Awesome. Praise the Lord. So it passes knowledge. Um, in sec 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 12. I know you guys like to go to the scriptures, so let's just go ahead. I'm, I'm zooming here, so. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, I just get excited. 1 Corinthians 2, the 6 through the 12th verse, it says this. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, not the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom of God ordained before the ages for our glory. Oh, jeepers, creepers. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. For it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Listen to this. But God has revealed them to us. Through His Spirit. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. yes. That's good. Yes. Okay. So, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. In the 14th verse there. So, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. What makes you different than other people? You have a different spirit. Yes. Yeah. You have yeah. another spirit. <laughs> yes. You do. Yeah. The spirit of man relates yeah. with the spirit of man. That's, right. That's why you have empathy and things like that. But when you have compassion, it's the spirit of God having compassion. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yes. There's, a, there's a whole different spirit. There's another spirit. Okay. So I wrote down here, what are we thinking? In Matthew, the fifth chapter, seeing how you're there at the Beatitudes. And I turned the page and I didn't keep my finger there. Matthew 5, 13 and 16 through 16. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. <coughs> it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp to put it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand that it might give light to all those who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. In other words, let the world see the steps in making you whole. Yes. Be hiding out until you're better. Do you ever do that? I can't be used of God until I really get mature. <laughs> well, I've been serving God for 40 some years and I'm telling you what. It's going to happen, I believe. <laughs> The Lord asked Peter to his, his buddy, Do you all want 
you also want to go away? And he says, uh, where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Yeah. I want you to know that you also Amen. have the words of eternal life. Amen. That's right. You can tell other people how to live forever. Amen. Otherwise, people, they're going to die forever. Yeah. We need to get that in our heads and in our hearts. Just let, let them see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They're not going to, you know, if they come and pat you on the back, you can tell them where it's coming from. <laughs> in Matthew 5.20, it says, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of God. Okay, Job 42.5, I have heard that the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see it. Now watch this. You notice in Matthew 5, yes. <coughs> yes, in Matthew 5, it says over and over, it says, you have heard it said of old. Okay? You have heard it said of old that, uh, well, what does it say? Uh, you shall not murder, etc. Don't judge. Therefore, you bring your gift to the altar. It says about adultery. If you commit adultery, you've heard it said of old. Furthermore, uh, it says, again, you have heard of old that if you don't swear falsely. Again, it's said of old, of eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And over and over and over again, you've heard it said of old. In other words, you heard with the ear what it said of old. Now Jesus is expanding on what it is to actually... To know what that means. If you commit adultery in your heart, you committed it already. If you're going out, standing up and, and being wonderful in front of everybody, you lost your reward. Um, et cetera, et cetera. When you pray, if you pray out in the street, okay? Things like that. Um, if you divorce your wife, if, uh, uh, if you swear falsely. In other words, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Any more than that. If you got to elaborate on, I swear to God I'll do that. You hear people say, do you promise? <coughs> Ever, ever say that to somebody or have somebody say that to you? Do you promise? Yeah. Listen, if my word isn't good enough for you, why are you ask me if I promise or not? Right. In other words, you're calling me a liar if you say, or do you promise? Right? If you don't keep your word, or you say to somebody, I will do this, and you don't keep your word, you're a liar. Myself, if I don't show up when I'm supposed to, it's because I forgot. It's not because I'm a liar. <laughs> oh, we oh. see the difference. I hope so. <laughs> I was at home one day and somebody called me on the phone and said, uh, Are you coming? I said, Different ways of thinking. Well, where? He says, To the funeral. I went, Oh. <laughs> I was doing the funeral. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. I, uh, they were so gracious to me. Just the nicest people. They, I finally showed up like 15 minutes. It took me a couple minutes to get a suit on, you know. And I show up there. I am the most embarrassed person. I'll tell you what, I started writing stuff down after that. I haven't missed one since. I didn't miss any before, but there is a difference between forgetting and lying. Okay? I just simply forgot. Why? Because I didn't write it down. If you don't write it down, it doesn't exist after you get it past a certain age. I have, I have a question. That's the rule of government. I have a question. Yes. Can I you make it that you're going to take them fishing on Saturday? Huh? You don't show up because you because you forgot. Huh? In his eyes, did you lie? Oh, yeah. If you tell a kid or anybody else that you're going to show up and you don't show up, whether you forgot or not, you're a liar. Right. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So if I was you, I'd write stuff down. It's really true. I never you have once to avoid the appearance. Yeah, I never once uh, did that to my kids because they had that done to them a lot. So not once did I not keep a promise that I was going to do. A lot of times it was to my hurt. If you give your word to your hurt and follow through, it's good for you. Right. Even if it's painful for you, it doesn't matter. You give your word, that's it. So let your yes be yes, your no be no. The point we are trying to make here. What makes us different than, okay, it was said of old, now you hear. And I wrote down here, what makes you different? That you grew up. Mm. And I grew up out of that, I forgot. So I started writing it down. Sooner or later, you've got to do what it takes yeah. to snap out of it. You've got to do what it takes to not function like you used to do it. Mm. The, the word says over and over, abide in me. Why do you think he says that? Because they weren't. Okay, people have the tendency not to. 
So he says, abide in me. Let my word abide in you. On and on it goes. He's always, every letter he wrote, uh, Paul wrote, he is writing to rebuke them for some stupid thing they're doing. Or to encourage them to do the right thing. Why? Because it just wasn't coming naturally. This is a supernatural life. Yes, you have the life of Christ inside of you. But it comes by experience, learning how to function with that life. Yeah. You know, I, I became a, you know, when I, when I was working as a carpenter. At first I go to work and I do all this stuff and pretty soon they called me a carpenter. But still I had to learn things. I went to work the other day, hung some cabinets. I had forgotten a few things. <laughs> they still paid me. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, but I, I had forgotten a few things. Why? Because I didn't go over and over and over it. And the tracks that were in my, my brain weren't deep anymore. They're just kind of on the surface. So when you're in the Word, just because now you're mature and wonderful in God, don't forget A just because you're on M. A, B, C, D, E, F, G are important. We don't just let them go. That's why we that's why we come to church. That's why we get taught. That's why we read the word. That's why we're in prayer. That's why these things of focus are so important. So I wrote down here, don't don't be like the world. And then Matthew, in Matthew 6, we see, we see, he'll make up for it. Your deeds of charity says don't do them before men. God will reward you. If you pray, don't do it before men. God will make up for it. If you fast, don't do it before people to be seen of them. God will make up for it. Let your Where your treasure is, there shall your heart be also. In other words, where is our treasure? Where our treasure is. In Matthew 6, 25-33, now I am going to read this. See, I told you I'd come back here. So, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing. I love this part. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither, neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? How do the birds do it? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? Listen to what he says. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what should we eat? What should we drink? What should we wear? What are we going to drive? Where are we going to live? Amen. Who am I going to be with? <clears throat> For after these things the Gentiles seek. How do we do this? Why do we do this? For your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things. <clears throat> okay. But seek first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. So, why do we do it? Because that's where our treasure is, and because Father will take care of us. Yeah. That's why we don't worry. That's why we do these things. That's where our treasure is. Okay? Therefore, reason. do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You got enough worries today, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah. I mean, you got to find something to eat today. You're going to have to go home and look in the refrigerator. <laughs> that is a big step. Oh Lord, help us all. Huh? Now, let's go back to Matthew 7, where we began. It says again, Not everyone, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. God stopped me here and he says, what are the things that I've told you to do that you're not functioning in at this point in time? What are the things people have counseled you to do that you have not done yet? Why, why are you concerned, worried, anxious, upset, weirded out, whatever? And he just asked me. He says, he says, he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now watch this. Many will say to me, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? So my focus 
people. God told me this year, it is not by might nor by power, Amen. but by my spirit, Amen. says the Lord. That's right. Amen. It's not what I can do. It's not how much I can work. It's how I function in the spirit. That's right. Okay? And then I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me who practice lawlessness. So my focus, according to this scripture, should be to know him. Yeah. And the power of his resurrection. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay. No, oh boy, those are good ones too. Okay. I got a couple minutes here. I rushed through that first part. You guys want to go on a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> One lady over here wants to. Thank you. Thank you over here. <laughs> I'm hungry. Come I'm on. hungry now. I'm oh. hungry. Oh, oh, for the work. Okay. For the work. All right. <laughs> go with me to Ezekiel then. Ezekiel 36. I'm not going to go over long. I don't think I've ever kept you guys over 40 minutes of my life. Okay? So, you're good. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Thirty-second cha 37th chapter. <laughs> In Ezekiel 37, 1 through 3, it says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Now, God was asking me about the stuff in my life, the dead stuff. He said, can those bones live? The stuff people have prophesied over you, the stuff you still want to accomplish, the things I still want to do. Can these bones live? And he says, Lord, you know. He says, prophesy to them bones. Yes. Mm, that's right. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you need to speak to your life the things you want happening in your life and tell those things happen in your life. That's right. Yeah. By faith, that chair can hold me up. After a while, the chair holds me up because I'm sitting in it, because it's reality to me. Before I sat down in the chair, I knew it would hold me up. Otherwise, I wouldn't have sat in it. We need to reach out by faith and take a hold of what God has for us until we sit in the stupid chair. Yes. Praise the Lord until it happens to us. And by the way, once you get to where you think you want to be, there'll be something more for you. Right. There'll be another chair to sit on. There'll be another relationship for you to have. There'll be another, some circumstance in your life that's got to be worked out. Every time, all the time, there's always something more. God challenges you all the time. He challenges you spiritually. He challenges you physically. He challenges you intellectually. He challenges you in every way. Aren't you glad? Yes. <clears throat> I never, you know, aren't you glad? Amen. I liked it when they let me run the job. <laughs> I got to think, you know. Otherwise, just go, you know, go to work. You know. But when they let you run the job, you had to think. And I always like to think. God, I'm telling you, God does not shut off your bright brain. God challenges you intellectually so that your mind will just go. <laughs> trying to get it. Isn't that right? There's an intellectual stimulation that God gives you through His Word. Yeah. I This morning, I was in, yesterday and the day before, I was so uh, focused on the Word of God. I was just going, how, how can I do this? I didn't know how to get what He was putting in me out. Every one of you is like that. Anybody that's been in the Word of late, something in there, God is just... Yep. Opening things up, opening yes. things up, opening yes. things up. Yes. It's just radical and awesome. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, okay. Can these bones live? Uh, the Lord, uh, the, in Ezekiel 11, 19, 18, 31, 36, 26, and 37, 14, He says, I will put a new heart in you, a new spirit in you, a new mind in you. I'll put my law in your hearts and on your minds I'll write them. You guys want those notes again? 1119, 1831, 3626, 3714. Okay. 
He says, I will put a new spirit in you. And then we go to Zechariah 4, 6. It says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. How are these things accomplished? A new spirit. What makes you different than other spirit? People, a new spirit. In Isaiah, the 30th chapter, this is so good. Isaiah, the 30th chapter. Some of you know where I'm going. So be quiet if you know. Isaiah, the 30th chapter, 1 and 2. And then 15, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, who devise plans, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, who walk and go down to Egypt, back to the world, and have not asked my advice. They strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and trust in the shadow of Egypt, the one they just came out of. Some of us as Christians will go back to the world, begin to think like the world, begin to act like the world. And I, I got a little smiley face here. It's, and they do not ask my advice. Right. It's like, yeah. the point is, you can. Yeah. Right. You can ask God's advice. He'll give it to you. Yeah. Go down to uh, 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 Mick and Claudia's church. Go in the men's bathroom. And there's a guy, a businessman, sitting there all suit. And he's behind a desk and the Lord's sitting there. And he's just, he's just staring at the Lord. And the Lord's kind of... Explaining some stuff to him. I thought, oh, that, he's asking the Lord's advice. And the Lord's giving him what he needs. Okay? It's a beautiful picture. It's a beautiful picture of how God would speak to us about stuff in our life. Everything. Yes. Business. Yes. Relationships. Yes. Everything. He's just there to, to communicate with us. And I'll, re, I'll write you girls that don't want to go in the boys' bathroom. Quiet over here. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. So Isaiah, the, but in the 15th verse it says, Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall you be saved, and in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Amen. Isn't that good? Remember in Hebrews, we did that study in Hebrews 4, when Regina preached and I preached? The rest of God? Mm -hmm. Okay. What happens when we come into it, he says in 4.10, in Hebrews 4.10, he says, He who has entered his rest has ceased from his work as God did from his work. God rested, we're to rest like He rested. How do you do it? Sick him, Holy Ghost. Take over, Holy Spirit. Basically, Holy Spirit is the worker guy. He is the guy, man. He is the one who does all of this stuff. God rested on the day. He let the Holy, the Holy Spirit was hovering above the face of the waters when God was speaking it into creation. That face of the waters was chaos. He is not afraid of your chaos. He's hovering on the face, and all you need to do is speak to that Holy Ghost will come. Yes. Get involved just like that every time you call on His name. In fact, if you're... God was dealing with me this week, uh, hanging those cabinets. And every time I get to focusing... And you know how you get at work? And you couldn't figure it out? Every time I went back... Me and you did this before. You simply go back to prayer. Oh, Lord, you're here. Thank you. And ping! It's like, see, here, you're in the dark. Okay, let's turn the light on. Ping. Oh, of course. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. You got it made, people. You really do have it made. Okay. Behold what manner of love the Father has given to un unto us, that he, we should be called the children of God. Amen. And again, in... First uh, John 4 it says, Not that we loved Him, but that He loved us and gave Himself for us. It's not even about you. It's not even about you. So, I'd like to do two things. These last two scriptures. In Psalm 51, and I'm not going to go there, but you guys go to, please, Isaiah 35, seems like you're right there. And then we'll go to Jude. But in Psalm 51 it says, uh, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. A right spirit. Get, get the right spirit back in there. Okay. In Isaiah 35, and I'm just going to read this, okay? 3 through 10, it says, Strengthen the weak hands, make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, He will come and save you. Amen. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer. 
and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. <coughs> the parched ground shall become a pool, the thirsty land springs of water. In the, in the inhabitants of jackals, there will, where each lay, there shall be grass and reeds and rushes. A highway there shall be, a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for others. Whoever walks the road, although a fool, shall not go astray. <laughs> no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast go on it. It shall be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. With everlasting joy on their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and soaring, sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Amen. Ain't that good? Yeah. I just thought I'd read that to you. Woo. It turned me on. I just couldn't stand it. Okay, now go to Jude, the 17th verse. Jude, first, second, third John, Jude, right before the revelation. First John, third John. Jude. Okay, this is good too. Now, but you, beloved, well, it says you, beloved, 17. Beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause division, not having the Spirit. Oh, man. That's interesting. Huh? Okay, okay. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. Look for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But on others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, having even their garments defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. I like that last part about us. But here it says, On some have compassion, making distinction on others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire hating even the garments that are stained by the flesh. Yes. Whatever it takes, help people to come into the kingdom. That's right. right. That's right. Scare the hell out of some of them. Preach the love into some of them. Whatever they need. You know, if they're not convicted, convict them. If they're convicted, convert them. Whatever. Okay? We need to be thinking about others rather than ourselves. Right. You created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. So, Father, we thank you for building us up today in our most holy faith. I thank you, God, for all of these things in this, this wonderful thing in Matthew, Lord, that it goes on and on and on. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us and, and making us alive in it. And so we offer ourselves to you again, God, that you might have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, young man. What a God. Regina, would you pray for that, please? Uh, before I pray for this, I, would, I just want to share with you guys, as Matt was preaching, the Lord reminded me, you know, everywhere I've gone lately has been a lot of water. Um, when we go out in the desert, even Easter, there was water just rushing down the hill there. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I was um, going to Arizona, on the outside of Fallon, going out there um, by the Greenhead, you guys know where that is, the water is rushing under the road bubbling out through the other side from and the desert the water is right there on the road and i was like wow look at all this water get down to the desert 109 degrees <laughs> colorado river is just big and beautiful and water and i was just like wow there's so much water everywhere so anyway but i have been having uh, dreams and visions of um, the blood water is coming up to our porch and we're sitting on the porch I, me sitting on the porch but it's not just me it's all of us so in the spirit I could, it's just not me it's all of us are sitting on our porch looking at this water it's just lapping right at our porch 
It's just right there. And as Matt was preaching this today, I was just thinking how we need to just, it's there. All the promises, everything in God is right there. And it's time to jump in the waters, you know, and just the vacation, take a swim. You know, when I was down the Colorado River, I took my grandkids down to the river. The river goes pretty fast in some places. Well, I always took them to the, um, this one place where it was all buoyed off, you know. So I wasn't just freaking out trying to save them all the time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, they're in a safe place. I can just sit here and watch them and enjoy it, yeah. you know. But um, so I'm just, I just want to encourage you with that. And I've had it more than once. So anyway, I don't know. God will probably give us more on that. Yeah. Anyway, so Lord, I just thank you. I thank you that the waters are right there. Hallelujah. I thank you that flood waters are right there. And I see it in the natural. Um, so we know this in the spiritual is coming. So, Father, we just want to jump into your, the river mm -hmm. and just um, bask in your, your goodness yes. and your Thank promises. You, God. And that we don't have to worry about a thing. We can just sit there and just rest in you. Because mm -hmm. we are on vacation. In you, Hallelujah. Lord. And we just praise you. And, Father, we just thank you that we get to give into your kingdom. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that... Um, we cannot outgive you, Lord. Yes. And your blessings sure. and your promises are true. Yes. And yeah. Lord, we just love you and we thank you for what you're doing in each of our lives and that you would work through us to reach those in the, in, um, the places that you have us go. Mm -hmm. Open our eyes to see those who need to hear the word of God and that we would not hold back Let's speak it with power in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So at 3 o'clock this afternoon, y'all, we're having a wedding here. So if you want to come to the wedding, that's great. We're not going to have church tonight because we're going to be partying next door <laughs> after the wedding. Okay? So come on by and uh, that's what we're going to do. So at 3 o'clock and then... Uh, immediately thereafter, my weddings aren't very long, so I come early, early. Yeah. Just coming for the party, don't be late. And it's a potluck. <laughs> it's a potluck. Yeah. Please bring a bunch of food, because yeah. I'm hungry right now. Yeah. And I have one more announcement. If anybody has the extra um, lawnmower, um, Peggy needs one. Lawnmower. She needs a lawnmower. Okay. So, got one? <laughs> I got I got an electric one, but it ain't worth a crap. <laughs> a manual push one. A manual push one? Oh. I was I was young. Man. Well, she needs one that you don't have to crank on for ten times just to get it going. We don't have any of those. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Or somebody go lower than I put rocks in so I don't have one. So you guys, God bless you forever in three days. Have fun today.